Hello, uh, my name is Francisco Rodriguez. I work as a press officer in Chile for the European Southern Observatory, ESO. And today I will talk about our program of virtual guided tours to ESO observatories. I will show you how we achieved to open virtually our observatories to the public during the COVID-19 pandemic, everything done remotely from our homes in Chile and in Germany. To start, as every visitor from our program, I would like you to take you on a trip to Chile. So let's go, let's change the perspective to that side. I will put full screen to enjoy. Well, exactly. Thanks to ESOCOM team, we are traveling to ESOS Paranal Observatory in the Tacama Desert in Chile. Before COVID-19 started, ESO sites La Silla and Paranal Observatories were a popular activity in Chile. More than 8,000 visitors each year travel across the Tacama Desert to see our telescopes. So, but what happened? Well, as we are seeing the, the domes of the VLT, we will change again and see what happened. I think you will probably know. Well, on March 2020, as COVID-19 was spreading globally, and to ensure the safety of the staff and the public, ESO decided to suspend all public visits to ESO observatories. At that moment, as a team, we started to think how we can deal with this new scenario and with the same resources. Well, it took us more or less um, three months to find and implement a solution, which was the ESO virtual guided tours. Here you can see in the, in, in, the, in the presentation that we have a third site, Chagnantor Alma, but we don't have virtual visits to that site yet. So what are the goals of our uh, virtual tours? Uh, well, we had three goals when we started. To first of all, to accompany our communities during COVID-19 pandemic scenario, no matter whatever they are, um, to bring back astronomy and ESO content to our communities, and finally to help our, and support our weekend visit guides. Well, which is the concept of this? Um, well, it's very simple. Um, the audience visits through 360 images, um, the main spots of ESO observatories, tours uh, which are available at ESO.org. But we added uh, the human factor. Instead of online visitors going alone through these images, our experience is guided by two people, one guy and one producer. One is in charge of the story and the other one is in charge of the visual experience. Also, uh, we go where regular on-site tours cannot go. For example, we show the night sky and the interferometry tools sorry, during our tours. And these zones where a tourist cannot go normally uh, are visited by our virtual visitors. This element uh, adds an extra value to the virtual uh, ones uh, instead of the on-site visits. We also broadcast via StreamYard, uh, so where, uh, which allow us to interact with the audience through Facebook or YouTube. The interaction between the guides is similar to a podcast or a videocast, where they pull out uh, the questions or comments of uh, the people during the broadcast. Also, we realized that the interaction with the public is a powerful tool and it is necessary for the success of this kind of um, um, uh, activities. The opportunity of engagement of these tours is amazing. The number of comments and questions is impressive. We have more than 30, 40 uh, per tour. Um, and people have a really good time and expressing their ideas during the entire experience. Each tour lasts 60 minutes and includes, includes uh, 10 to 20 minutes of questions. As an extra, the experience could include also a talk of a, or a Q&A session of an ISO staff. Also, the tours include different elements such as videos or photos as you saw at the, at the beginning. All these elements are not part of the regular tours and add extra value, as I said before, to the virtual ones. So I would like to, to invite you to see one minute of a, a tour.
Welcome everyone, my name is Gonzalo Aravena and with the producer Farichar, we will be your guides in this virtual experience at the European Solar Observatory, or ESA. So as always, all your questions will always be welcome and at the end of this tour, we will give you a little survey so you can send us all your comments. So in the next hour, we will travel to the Antofagasta region in the north of Chile. We will virtually visit the ESA's Paranal Observatory, which is at 2,600 meters above the sea level. So we also invite you to send us your questions. Um, I imagine you may have a few already. So for this purpose, from now on. So here we have a, a regular tour. As you can see in the left of your screen, we have a Gonzalo who is talking. And we have a black box where um, Farid Char, another guy, is uh, receiving the comments and questions of the audience. Um, you can see now, uh, as Gonzalo is showing the map of South America, where the observer showing where the observatory is, and to the right we have the 360 images. So we are going to um, skip a little bit to show you a little bit more um, of the tour. Well, here we have in the uh, the platform, and now Gonzalo is showing inside of a telescope UT3 or Melibal in Mapuche language. And you can see that he can zoom in, zoom out of the photo, and he can show different aspects of the telescope, which is very important and very interesting for our, our, our audience. So um, we will change again. Uh, we'll continue with the presentation. So what uh, were our resources? Uh, we work with different resources from the very beginning, and I would like to divide them between those which we already had in-house and those which had to develop from scratch. For example, we had amazing materials such as 360 degrees images and the experience of our guides, which are key for me in, in, in this, um, in this uh, activity but we lacked of a software to broadcast properly. So we look for different options outside of our comfort zone, which means Microsoft Teams, and we find a stream there. We found the StreamYard. So in yellow here, you can see those we didn't have from the very beginning and without any um, color, those which had already had. Uh, so we developed new scripts. Uh, scripts. Um, we had a StreamYard. We found a StreamYard. Uh, we start a program of, of regular trainings to adapt the physical world tools to the virtual ones, and we also develop a survey to see and to realize about what are the opinions of our audience um, and see what they they think about our experience. And so far, it's very very good. Um, success. Well, during 2020, ISOCOM offered 72 tours in English and in Spanish with an audience of more than 7,000 live viewers and thousands of reproductions of each tour. Another way to measure success for us is the internal requests. Different departments inside ISO took this idea and asked uh, for help to implement similar tours according to their needs. For example, we collaborated with um, a tool to promote the studentships, as you can see in the image, or the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. So it, it, I, for me, it's one of the best um, ways to measure success when others see your the idea of the, of the department and ask for your help. So what we learn, and this is perhaps very obvious, but it's good to tell you about this. Well, explore your resources. At ESO, we had an enormous archive of images and videos, but many of them are just saving dust. So we simply connect the dots between them. We team up with different parts of the organization. As uh, you can, uh, you, well, you saw, we start to work with the Office of Science um, here, um, here at ESO. We, did, uh, we made a lot of mistakes, and they are great if you can learn from them. Uh, we look for success successful examples outside from our comfort zone. For example, we saw um, a lot of um, gaming um, broadcast uh, uh, broadcast uh, because they had a lot of experience in this, and we took a lot of ideas from that world. 
And we adapt our tools to the idea and not backwards. Uh, so instead of using uh, Microsoft Teams, which is the software that we use internally here at the organization at ISO, we uh, uh, went for StreamYard, which is a better tool to this kind of um, things. And well, what are the futures uh, plans for us? Uh, well, many school communities have approached ISO, searching for similar tools uh, for, uh, with a specific content for uh, their classes. So ISO wants to be developed uh, visits exclusively from for them, for school communities. So we're working in this. And with um, saying that uh, and seeing my time, I have to say goodbye. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions, please uh, write me an email and I will be more than happy to answer them. And I'm, I'm waiting for your um, questions. So back to you, Francisco, on the other side, if there's any questions. So, and thanks for the opportunity to the organizers. Uh, goodbye and see you soon. Ciao.